Oh, sorry, is uh, SLC TV ready? Okay, great. Welcome to tonight's Salt Lake City Council formal meeting. If you've joined us over the past few months, you've seen already that we're holding our meetings remotely due to the declarations of emergency related to the pandemic and earthquake. While we continue our remote meetings, we are happy to have you connecting with us online or by phone. Thank you for joining us. To begin, we'll take a moment of silence as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance to ourselves. And when we're done, we'll go ahead and turn the video back on. So if everyone would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, um, reciting that to yourself. All right, welcome back. Although conducting our meetings electronically is different from our in-person norm, we still uh, have a few city council meeting guidelines that we wanna make sure that people follow so that everyone feels comfortable and safe to participate. To help facilitate our meeting, especially the comment period, please be respectful. Avoid yelling and making racial slurs, obscene or defamatory remarks. Uh, so we are at, um, our item four um, on the agenda, which is um, approving the work session and formal meeting minutes of Thursday, July 2nd, 2020. I will look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the meeting minutes or the dates that you mentioned. Okay, is there a second? Yep. Okay, I have a... Uh, Motion from Council Member Fowler, a second from Council Member Rogers. Is there any discussion to this motion? Seeing none, then we'll go ahead and roll call it. Uh, roll call the vote. Council Member Rogers? Yes. Johnston? Yes. Valdemoros? Yes. Uh, Mono? Yes. Dugan? Yes. Fowler? Yes. And I'm a yes as well. Um, those passed unanimously. We will go ahead and move on to item A5. Um, this is a joint ceremonial resolution with Mayor Mendenhall designating Salt Lake City as the Utah Heritage City, honoring the 150th anniversary of Utah women being the first in the nation to vote under an equal suffrage law. Today, uh, the councils rescheduled this joint uh, ceremonial motion with Mayor Mendenhall honoring the 50th anniversary. Um, because it, this is an election year, and it's um, and particularly recognizing that the year 2020 is special as it marks the 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment, which guaranteed um, Americans the right to vote regardless of sex. 2020 also marks the 55th anniversary of the passage of the Voting right, Rights Act, which is timely to recognize. The Voting Rights Act prohibited racially discriminatory voting practices and barriers which were systemically in, uh, instituted in many states following the conclusion of the Civil War. So I'll go ahead and read that joint resolution now. Um, a joint resolution designating Salt Lake City as a Utah heritage city during the year of 2020. Whereas Salt Lake City, Utah was uh, the place where the first vote under women's suffrage law was uh, cast and counted and Whereas Utah is celebrating the 150th anniversary of that historic first vote cast by Sarah Young in 1870. And whereas the council hall in Salt Lake City, standing at 120 East, 300 South, and now located at 300 North State Street, was where the Utah Territorial Legislature voted in 1870 to extend voting rights to women 
and where two days later, Sarah Young and 24 other women cast their ballots in a municipal election. And whereas Utah women uh, voted for 17 years before federal legislation revoked their suffrage, after which they organized and worked together to regain voting rights in Utah's state constitution. And whereas Utah was instrumental in paving the way for women's voting rights to spread across the United States. And whereas 2020 marks the 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, which extended voting rights to women's citizens throughout the United States. And whereas this year also marks the 55th anniversary of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which protected voting rights for people of color. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Salt Lake City Council and mayor of Salt Lake City designate Salt Lake City as a Utah heritage city during the year 2020. Be it further resolved that Salt Lake City celebrates Utah women who were the first to vote under an equal suffrage law in a Salt Lake City election, no doubt, um, honors Utah suffragists who advanced the rights of women and uh, promoted democratic values at the core of the United States, recognizes the women who continue to work to secure suffrage and citizenship for the rights of women of color and break down barriers of their political uh, participation, acknowledges the legacy of strong influential female trailblazers who serve in their families and communities and encourages women to continue to participate in civic life. I will look for a motion. Councilmember Valdemoros. Mr. Chair, I, I move that we ratify this um, statement that you just made. I'm not sure if that's correct. Yes, this resolution. This resolution, please. Okay. Councilmember Fowler, oh, I was just going to say, Councilmember Fowler, would you like to second it? All right. I have a motion from Councilmember Voldemoros, a second from Councilmember Fowler. Um, is there any discussion to this? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and proceed to a roll call vote. Councilmember Rogers. Yes. Councilmember Johnston. Yes. Councilmember Voldemoros. Yes. Councilmember uh, Mono. Yes. Councilmember Dugan. Yes. Councilmember Fowler. Yes. And I am a yes as well. That passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Um, we'll move on to item B, which is our public hearings. Um, public hearings and general comments we're going to hear as one item. Um, the standard order for the formal meeting agenda has been adjusted so that we can accommodate this electronic meeting. And that's the reason for combining um, sections B and C of our agenda. Um, which includes the general comment period and the specific public hearings. In addition to the comments given tonight, our office has received a number of public comments through email, and they will be included as part of this public record. Before we begin, I want to take a minute to explain our election process. Although we are all joining the meeting electronically, we do still want to provide a space for people to feel comfortable and safe to participate. To help facilitate our comment period, please be respectful Avoid yelling or making racial slurs, obscene or defamatory remarks. Please know if a caller is not respectful, you will be given one warning. And if a caller continues to not follow the council's meeting rules, we will need to mute your microphone. I'll first uh, read the public hearings for the evening and then open the, um, the comment period. Our meeting host will identify the callers in the order that they have arrived in WebEx. The host will call the names of the three uh, commenters at a time so that the second and third person can be ready to speak when it's their turn. If you do not wish to speak when the host states your name and unmutes your line, please state that you're here to listen and we'll move on to the next commenter. If you do wish to speak when the meeting host unmutes your line, please state your name, indicate which public hearing item uh, or items you wish to speak on and whether you have a general comment uh, and the two minute timer will begin. At the two minute mark, the host will announce time and your microphone will be muted. If you indicate you want to speak to more than one item, the host will prompt you to move on to your next topic. If you're unable to complete your full comment within the two minutes allotted, please feel free to mail the Salt Lake City Council at PO Box 145476, Salt Lake City, Utah, 84114, 5476 or you can email us at council.comments at slcgov.com. Or you can call our 24-hour comment line. The number for that is 801-535-7654. 
We have three public hearings tonight. Item B1 is a resolution for project funding allowing or allocations in the capital improvement program, which involves the construction, purchase, or renovation of buildings, parks, streets, and other physical structures. Item B2 is an ordinance that would regulate the use of electronic scooters and other dockless shared mobility devices in the city. Item B3 is regarding a previously awarded grant to the Salt Lake City Police Department uh, for community policing and overtime projects to fund training for sworn and civilian personnel and to find the peer fund, excuse me, the peer support program. Um, Bobby will um, help host us tonight. So Bobby, will you go ahead and uh, start with our first public comment or caller? Thank you, Council Chair. Just as a quick reminder to our attendees that if you have showed up to the meeting, you are on our queue. If you do not wish to speak, feel free to message us and let us know. With that being said, uh, we will start with Adnan uh, Milicic, followed by Margot Beecroft, Alex April, and then Dennis Taylor. Okay. Yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Otto Adnan Milicevic. Uh, I am here to give comment on B2, the dockless shared uh, vehicles. Okay, go ahead. Uh, good evening, Honorable Council and Mayor. Uh, thank you so much for your leadership during this difficult time in our city. My name is Otto Milicevic, and I am the Operations Manager for SPIN, one of the shared mobility device companies here in Salt Lake. I am a longtime resident of Salt Lake City for over 22 years, and I'm raising my three children here. As a local resident who migrated here at the age of 13, this is home, and I am personally committed to making sure SPIN's operations serve our community's needs. Since SPIN's launch in March 2019, our operations team has been committed to helping Salt Lake City fill transportation gaps and provide an alternative, sustainable, and accessible option for residents and visitors. SPIN is committed to providing good quality jobs without making employees settle for independent contractor status. All of our employees in Salt Lake City are just that, W-2 employees with living wages. We work closely with the local communities and city to adjust operations after receiving feedback. I've personally reached out to over 25 local community councils and organizations to hear feedback on SPIN and our operations. To date, SPIN is the only operator willing and able to implement no ride zones via geofencing in the Capitol Hill and Temple Square areas. Another example to demonstrate our investment in the Salt Lake City community is our effort to educate users in person downtown during busy rush hour times. After the city launched their Walk Your Wheels campaign, my team and I walked up and down downtown for over 120 hours, educating users in person on writing and parking laws. We also gave out free helmets to users. Lastly, my team and I have scaled up our operations to meet changing transit schedules and availability by deploying the cap. Hi. Uh, meanwhile, meeting deployment requirements west of I-15 and downtown. We support the council's decision to move forward with the permanent program and look forward to continuing in collaboration with the community. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Margot Beecraft. Go ahead, Margot. Um, my name is Margot Beecroft, and I'm here to address the e-scooter ordinance. Um, I am a homeowner in District 4, and I appreciate so much the opportunity to talk to you. My sense about scooter riders is that they are oblivious, oblivious to rules, pedestrians and the potential danger they are to themselves and others. We have created this situation by allowing scooter companies unfettered access to downtown side sidewalks for the last two years. As a downtown resident, I have a front row seat to scooters behaving badly. This week I saw a mother with a tiny little girl facing backwards and clinging to her mother's legs as they rode down a South Temple sidewalk. Not far behind her was a shopper who was juggling several packages 
and a drink while also trying to grab the handlebars of her scooter. In both cases, I quickly stepped aside and tried not to imagine a terrible accident. What can we do about this? How can we get these people off the sidewalks? It won't do to just put stencils on the sidewalks or make larger signs. I've read through the ordinance and appreciate the thoughtful effort that has gone into its development, but I still do not see a solution to waking up the public and getting them off the sidewalks. For a time, there must be visible enforcement, live police officers or parking officials or security figures wearing badges and uniforms who stop the scooters, issue tickets, move riders off the sidewalks. The scooter companies should pay for this enforcement as they have gorged themselves on our benevolence for the last two years. Then these scenes of enforcement should be played out on TV, in newspapers, on social media until the public is finally awake and aware that the downtown is no longer a playground. Hard work must be done. Overcome two years of benign neglect and the scooter company should put the bill. Thank you for your comments, Margo. Next up, we have Alex April, followed by Dennis Taylor and then Calvin Jolly. Alex. Hi. Hi, good evening, uh, Honorable Council Members Mayor. Uh, thanks so much for the opportunity to give public comment this evening on the Dockless Shared Mobility Item uh, B2. My name is Alex April and I work as a Senior Government Partnerships Manager for SPIN, one of the scooter companies here in Salt Lake City. So SPIN is an independent subsidiary of Ford Motor Company and is committed to working with cities that we operate in. That's why we created the Partnership Promise, which means sharing goals around safety, responsiveness, and equitable service. We've been in regular communications with city staff and continue to refine our model to meet the needs of Salt Lake City. SPIN is committed to equity. Our low-income program, SPIN Access, offers 50% off normal rights to eligible low-income residents. We've also consistently met deployment requirements set by the city to ensure scooters are deployed in these equity zones. SPIN also partnered with the city on the Walk Your Wheels campaign last fall. Our efforts included in-person outreach, digital advertising, and education both in-app and on device to ensure users are fully aware that sidewalk riding is illegal and scooters must be parked properly. We know that there is more that we can do to educate users and residents, and that's why we're very open to feedback from all of you. In regards to the ordinance for consideration this evening, we applaud your work to make the Dockless Shared Mobility Program a viable, long-term, permanent mobility program through an RFP process. We support the ordinance and want to make sure that the city is able to cover expenses of the program, but also want to make sure that costs are not prohibitive to our continued partnership with the city. We suggest Salt Lake City utilizes a combination of upfront permit fees along with a per ride fee to fund the program. Spin also suggests that the city put the burden of compliance like sidewalk riding and proper parking on the operator and keep companies accountable, whether this be increased educational outreach or having operators implement a fee structure for non-compliant users. Thanks so much for your consideration uh, this evening. We look forward to continuing to partnering with you all on any new regulations and offer ourselves as a resource if you have any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Next up, we have Denise Taylor, followed by Calvin Jolly, and then call in user two, last four digits, 7071. Thank you. Um, I'm addressing the electric scooter ordinance. My name is Denise Taylor, a downtown homeowner in District 4. I thank you for all that you have done as a council to address the e-scooter issue in our great city. I've enjoyed working with Mayor Mendenhall, Chris Wharton, Anna Valdemoros, and Transportation Director John Larson. Although the dockless shared mobility ordinance has been two years in the making, I appreciate the methodical, diligent work performed over that time by the Transportation Department in structuring an ordinance that has taken into account many of the concerns of downtown residents. The overarching goals of the ordinance and associated fee schedule should be to protect the pedestrian public on the sidewalks of downtown and provide enough revenue from the scooter companies to allow the city to properly administer this ordinance. Although my initial desire was for e-scooters to be banned from downtown altogether, 
Our state legislators denied the cities in Utah that opportunity by passing State Bill 139. If the ordinance is not sufficiently enforced and public health and safety deteriorates as a result, we will need to address the threat of e-scooters at the state level. My greatest concerns now are ordinance enforcement and how to best educate the public regarding the provisions of the ordinance and what activities constitute a violation. To assist in this effort, I suggest the city require each scooter company to prominently display the map of downtown where bikes and e-scooters are banned from operating on the sidewalks at the initial unlocking screen of the scooter by the rider. This map can be can be found at the slc.gov transportation website under bicycle laws. Scooter companies should also be required to pay for personnel to issue citations and for signage around downtown indicating sidewalk riding is a violation of the ordinance and riders are subject to fines. A comprehensive education campaign to include social media, news outlets, TV, newspapers, and a period of strict enforcement of the ordinance will be vital to preserving public safety. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Dr. Taylor. Next, we have Calvin Jolly, followed, been called by, followed by call in user two, last 47071, and call in user three, last 40119. Thank you very much for having me today. Um, I am not here to address the e scooter issue. But I am a longtime resident of District 4 in Central City, uh, and I, for one, prefer downtown Salt Lake City as a playground. I'll just say that much. Um, I want to take just a moment to um, address the general fund capital projects. I'd like to begin by thanking the council for the 325 grand that you guys dumped into the Artesian Well Park on 8 South and 5th East. That's awesome. It's up and running. It attracts people from all over the valley. I have two homes on the west side of 50, just a half block from there, side by side. I've been here for 20 years, watched the growth and development um, of this area. When I moved here, this was the west side. Um, it is now certainly going to be the next sugar house and right downtown Salt Lake City. And I want to encourage you, Mayor Mendenhall and city council members. Oh, by the way, uh, Mayor Mendenhall, you took my vote, so thank you for all you're doing. Um, uh, Fifth East, when you go to allocate funds for the roads, really look at Fifth East. Mayor Becker did some great work on developing bike pathways and crosswalks and uh, pedestrian thoroughfares in the city. One of the oversights of his administration, I think, was believing that they could drive northern traffic from Liberty Park up 6th East. That doesn't happen. Although 6th East, both sides of the uh, road are used as exclusive bike lanes, nobody uses that road. 5th um, East is the most heavily trafficked boulevard, I think outside, like outside of maybe 7th East, um, between State Street and 13th. I can speak personally to the curbs, the gutters, and the road repair between 9th South, which is the park, and 5th South, which is that Smith's Food King. Um, you have, you have, yeah, you, you got a lot of road work, and I hope that we can put some money there. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Calvin. Next, we have call in user two, last 47071, followed by call in user last 40119, followed by Cristobal Villegas. 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 Thank you, Council Chair. Yes. George Chapman. Hello. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> Okay, my name is George Chapman. On the C, I have three different um, issues to discuss: CIP scooters and general comments. Appreciate it if you give me a two-minute warning on each of them. First of all, on the CIP, the city daycare project should be investigating Benyon. We've been going around in circles for a decade, and the more use of Benyon as a daycare, the more students they'll get and attend, and it'll keep open. And that's important. Also, I'd like to use the $247,000 transportation impact fees for free fare, and it should be spent on something free fare would work really well. Uh, the Foothill Trails deserves more than the $565,000. Uh, 
625,000 for the Green Lope should be used for Foothill. The $800,000 for Wing Point should be used for Foothill. And even though you didn't fund the Kensington Byway, the 400,000 should be used for Foothill. Statement that there's no additional maintenance for cycle tracks is not true. It's very expensive and difficult to regularly maintain uh, cycle tracks. And the first year, third south cycle track, I think cost uh, half a million or more to maintain. Uh, Salt Lake City still needs a safe camping area for the homeless. And since we are not using and have not used seven or 15 acres in the depot district for decades, please use CIP funds for homeless camping next to homeless services instead of allowing the homeless to camp anywhere they can and even thinking about putting out porta potties. On the scooters issue, the idea that we will have cops chasing speeding scooters on sidewalks is nuts. We're trying to decriminalize all our little laws and requiring a scooter to have a switch to five miles an hour for sidewalks and 50 miles an hour for streets makes a whole lot more sense. And I think bicycling and scooter use on sidewalks is going to happen downtown no matter what. We just have to make sure they don't go more than five miles an hour. Even lacrosse players who regularly get hit with men going 15 miles an hour are intimidated by scooters. Scooters should not and cannot safely operate on streets downtown and cannot operate safely on cycle tracks. Geofencing does not work well downtown. Anybody who knows RF knows geofencing downtown with tall buildings won't work. A switch is easier to implement and they need a five miles an hour switch. 10 to 20% of the sales should go to painting wide bicycle lanes on streets while reducing vehicle lane widths to 10 to 11 feet. On the general comments, are you still with me? Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, closing restrooms and parks and installing porta potties on 13th South does not make sense. It's like telling kids to play in streets after dark. Wait, why are we doing that? We are doing that and we shouldn't be doing that. Um, on decriminalizing bicycling, we stopped ticketing vehicles. So why are we continuing to ticket unsafe bicycling and jaywalking? By the way, the mayor can do it administratively. The former Chief Burbank recognized that continuing to ticket jaywalking affects the homeless who accumulate hundreds of tickets and get warrants like Carmen did, which escalates issues and that should never escalate. So I'm asking the mayor to decriminalize or ask the police to stop ticketing those people. Uh, Council Mayor, we need more police walking patrols to discourage criminal activities. There is an open air drug market next to a high school on 13th South. State Street and North Temple areas have been begging for police walking patrols, not to arrest, but to discourage crime. And finally, equating the Palacios shooting with George Floyd is an insult. George Floyd was tortured and murdered by a police officer, and that should continue to be protested. Palacios was a totally different situation. Thank you for listening. Any questions or comments? Thank you, George. Uh, next, we have Colin user three, last four, zero, one, one, nine, followed by Cristobal, and then Mackenzie Bayou. Colin user three. Last four zero Hello. one can one nine. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. So I'm. My name is Kenny Workman. I'm just taught, supposed to sit in on a city council meeting for a class assignment. So I don't really have anything to say. That's okay. Thanks for joining us and tuning in. Next, we have Cristobal. Cristobal, you're unmuted now. Hello, um, my name is Cristobal Villegas or Cristobal. Um, thank you for your time. This is a little bit different. Um, it's kind of different uh, not being able to be seen by all of you, but at least you can hear my voice. I just want to comment on the most recent police response toward protesting on uh, next to the DA's office. And just want to express that as a city resident, as a you know, a active community member, 
I have been, I'm this displeased really how they reacted. Um, as we were holding hands and, and holding arms, they charged at us. And then I have a bruised leg with the bruised elbow, cuts and whatnot. It's kind of funny hearing these other people on the line uh, talk about their scooters and more cops. It's kind of interesting how, uh, I don't know, how they really do think that more cops equal less crime, and that's not true. Um, it's, you know, we have more cops on the west side, and yet there's more crime. And then you look on the east side, and there's a lot less cops and a lot less crime. And then we wonder why that is. And so in a future that we're working toward as, you know, active community members toward the abolishment of police, I do hope that you all see how um, state violence is promoted as a institution by Salt Lake City. There are some really great council members, um, and I really would like to thank them. However, myself included, we are complicit in all of this. My, we, we've been chanting, you know, District Attorney Sim, Sim Gill has blood on his hands. I also have blood on my hands because I voted for him. And unfortunately, um, as people who do vote, we are also all complicit in the murder of Bernardo Palacios Carvajal. And there was a gentleman who said that it's different from George Floyd. It's not. The killing of black and brown bodies has been happening for years and years. And there are a little bit differences here and there, but the thing is, at the end of the day, he was shot, 34, uh, shot at 34 times, you know, in the back. And regardless of all like, what people do say, you know, I just want to share uh, it is different. And well, thank you for your time. Next, we have Mackenzie uh, Viau, uh, Gabby Lemansky, and then followed by Ann Charles. Mackenzie, you're unmuted. Good evening. Uh, my name is Mackenzie Viau, and I'm speaking on behalf of Lyme for the Dockless Scooter Ordinance. I want to thank Salt Lake City Council and Mayor Mendenhall for allowing me to speak today. As a smart urban mobility company, Lime is committed to making it easier, more affordable, and more accessible for people to get around local communities. We are grateful to bring our operational expertise to Salt Lake City and truly value the public-private partnership we have formed. We understand that despite the successes the past two, of two years, there is still room for improvement in particular when it comes to safety and parking concerns. Lyme continues to prioritize safety via our first ride trainings, in-app education, and helmet giveaways. We have seen some promising results with Lyme Patrol as we work to address improper parking and sidewalk riding. We look forward to ongoing collaboration to identify best practices. Lyme is generally supportive of the scooter ordinance and we appreciate all of the staff and mayor's work on the issue. We want to briefly address one aspect of the program we believe would benefit from further discussion with the city and the industry. That is the fee structure. Lyme respectfully requests the council's consideration of implementing a 10 cent per trip fee on scooter vendors to cover the necessary administrative costs and operational impacts. The 10 cent per trip fee captures the actual use of each scooter ride and allows the vendor to submit payment on a monthly or quarterly basis and provides data to the city for reliable rec reconciliation and ease of administrative burden. A per trip fee has a strong support across the industry and will provide much needed cost amortization as the micromobility industry works to ensure we remain viable for a long term. Currently, Wilmington, Indiana, Elizabeth, New Jersey, Norfolk, Virginia, Phoenix, Arizona, as well as many Utah towns charge a 10 cent per trip fee and consider it a reasonable rate. I'm sorry, that's your time. Thank you, though, Mackenzie. Council Chair, next we have Gabby Lomansky, followed by Ann Charles and then Maeve Wall. Gabby? Hi, uh, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, so my name is Gabby Lomansky. Um, I appreciate that the city council is moving forward on demilitarizing the police, but we need a stronger language. 
Never is there a need for military weapons, so the council should pass a ruling that clearly defines and removes any and all military equipment. I also want to thank the Salt Lake City Council for sending me information on what military grade weapons that the SLCPD has. And at this moment in time, they have an MRAP, which is a mine resistant vehicle and 80 rifles. I don't think the police department needs a military grade tank for dealing with unarmed citizens. The other issue I have with this is how do we ethically dispose of these weapons? I would be ashamed if they went to another police department to terrorize another city. Likewise, I would like to see the Salt Lake City Council make a ruling that states the SLCPD won't be called out for non-criminal calls. This is the start of what your constituents want and sh can show real change. I would also like the council to address the show of force that the police department made on July 9th. There's no doubt that the police rushed the crowd and acted violently towards peaceful protesters. I want to remind the council that broken property is not more important than human life. Um, uh, would I be able to make a brief comment on the scooters as well? Sure, go ahead. Um, and uh, I think there needs to be clear established rules for the scooters and I think the companies that make them need to be held responsible, but I definitely don't want to see more police officers trying to track people down because that would uh, require more funding. Um, I think more bike and scooter lanes would help. I, I just, I don't think it's realistic that we're going to get rid of them in Salt Lake. I, I do find them annoying when they're just sitting on the sidewalk and, you know, you can't use the sidewalk for walking. So something should be done. Um, but all in all, uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Gabby. Next up, we have Ann Charles, followed by Maeve Wall, and then Don Jackson is our last uh, attendee wishing to speak to the council. Ann, you're unmuted. Hi, I had a quick comment about the scooters and then a general comment as well. In regards to the scooters, I definitely agree with Gabby. Um, there should be more, the onus of responsibility should be on the companies that are putting the scooters in the cities, and there should be a lot more regulation on them. I think trying to regulate individual people will just take resources away from right police and I don't want more resources going to the police of, you know, ticketing or arresting people for things that aren't necessarily that important. But I think the company should be held to a higher standard when it comes to safety and when it comes to making sure people are vetted or know what the heck they're doing on them. I see a lot of people being reckless and it just really concerns me when it comes to public safety. And then for my general comment, I just wanted to comment on Aaron Mendenhall's statement about what Sim Gill's decision was. I was really disappointed by it, particularly in the second portion of it, when you said that um, the police officers working within the system that you hired and trained to work uh, and trained them to work within gave you confidence that they'll also reform to for greater justice in a more equitable city. I don't see how you can make that kind of leap with them shooting someone over 30 times. I think, think about your words before you put them out to the world. I don't think it was a well-worded statement. I think you could have meant something good behind it, but it got lost in a lot of the choices that you made with your wording. And I don't think the police are giving me confidence that they're going to reform. And I don't think they're giving the majority of people the confidence that they're going to reform. Thank you. Do better. Rude. Thank you. Um, what, sorry, was that was that Ma? Or me? I'm sorry. Or was that Anne? No, that was Anne. Okay, sorry. Thank you, Anne. Go ahead, Maeve. Maeve, Hi. you're unmuted now. Okay, sweet. Thanks. Hi, I'm Maeve Wall. Chris and Amy, it's nice to see you guys again. Um, first of all, I wanted to say, you know, to these people calling in about scooters, I think it's awesome. I encourage everyone to be politically involved. I'm growing in my ability to be politically involved, but I hope that everyone who is so invested in the scooters in our city is also invested in the lives of our community members and those who are being um, murdered and harmed by police officers. Um, over the weekend, I saw pictures and spoke with people who had broken noses, broken bones, being beaten by baton with batons, being um, you know, shot at with rubber bullets or sponge bullets. Um, and so I think that there is a massive problem uh, that needs to be at the forefront of everyone's mind. Um, I love what Cristobal said about the blood on our hands. It's something that I think about and sit with. I know that 
you as council people are thinking about and sitting with, but I'm just asking you again to go further. Um, I think that we need to put pressure right now on the Salt Lake City Police Department to react differently, differently at these protests because um, the violence and brutality that we are experiencing um, is unjust and is exactly the issue with police uh, in the first place. And then the measures on demilitarizing police must also go further. Um, we need to define very clearly what you mean when you say that you're demilitarizing the police because tools like foam or as you said, uh, is it sponge bullets, uh, beanbag rounds, uh, police shields, helicopters, those are all tools that are used by militaries around the world to oppress dissent. And the possession of this equipment and their use by the Salt Lake City Police Department against civilian protesters is an act of state suppression. So this ban should specifically define and ban these tools outright. And then I also wanted to comment along the same lines as Annie um, previously that uh, Mayor Mendenhall's comments are very disappointing. And Mayor Mendenhall, you asked us to trust this process, right? And I think lots of citizens loved and want to believe, I want to believe. Uh, this is a com this is a separate comment if that's okay um yeah as long as it's related to one of the hearing items oh no it's uh just the the police demilitarizing and then mayor in the hall's comment okay yeah i'm sorry we have to enforce the two minute time okay but Thanks. you can you can submit those comments um either to the council or to the mayor's office directly perfect thank you Thank you. Council Chair, the yes. last commenters seem to have left, so we have no more commenters. Okay. Um, well, thank you to everybody who did um, call in for um, public comment tonight. We do appreciate that feedback. And um, as I said, if you didn't get a chance, there are a couple people who we had to cut off. Um, so if you um, want to conclude your full comments, you can send those, as I said, to the council um, or to the mayor's office or both. And we're happy to um, have those and include your full comment as part of the public record. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, I'll now look for um, a motion regarding B1. B1 is a resolution for project funding allocations in the capital improvement program, which involves the construction, purchase, or renovation of buildings, parks, streets, and other physical structures. Mr. Chair, I move that we um, continue public hearing to Tuesday, August 11th. Okay. Or a future date, but just potentially Tuesday, August 11th. Okay. Is there a second. second? I have a motion from Councilmember Fowler and a second from Councilmember Rogers. Is there any discussion to this item? I'm just scrolling through, seeing none. We'll go ahead and proceed to a roll call vote. Councilmember Rogers. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Valdemoros. Yes. Mono. Yes. Hugan. Yes. Fowler. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That passes unanimously. Um, we'll now move on to um, item B2, which is regarding an ordinance that would regulate the use of electric scooters and other Doppler shared mobili mobility devices in the city. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we continue the public hearing to a future date. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Fowler and a second from Council Member Rogers. Is there any discussion to this? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and roll call it. Council Member Rogers. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Valdemoros. Yes. Uh, Mono. Yes. Dugan. Yes. Fowler. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That passes unanimously. Now move on to um, agenda item B3 which is regarding a previously awarded grant to the Salt Lake City Police Department. The city received the grant funding in 2017 for community policing and overtime projects to fund training for sworn and civilian personnel and to fund the peer support program. I'll look for a motion. Mr. Chair, I move the council close the public hearing and refer item B3 to a future consent agenda for action. Second. 
I have a motion from Council Member Rogers and a second from Council Member Johnston. Is there any discussion to this? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a roll call vote. Council Member Rogers. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Valdemoros. Yes. Mono. Yes. Hugan. Yes. Fowler. Yes. And I'm yes as well. Um, that is unanimous. Um, we will now move on to section C, um, which is the, uh, we already, it's a comment section of our agenda, but we've already um, addressed our comments um, previously. So that brings us to item C2. Um, questions from the city council to the mayor. Mayor Mendenhall, thank you for being here with us. Um, council members, does anybody have questions for the mayor? All right, no questions. Thanks again, Mayor Mendenhall for being here. Um, uh, we will now move on to item D, which is potential action items. We have none, item E is new business. Uh, we have none, so we'll proceed to item, or agenda item F. F1 is regarding um, a resolution for the Public Utilities Revenue Bond Series 2020. This authorizes the issuance and sale of not more than 200 million aggregate principal amount um, and aggregate principal amount of public utilities revenue bond series 2020 related to water, sewer, and stormwater capital improvements. Is there a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we adopt the resolution. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Fowler and a second from Council Member Johnston. Is there any discussion to this item? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and roll call it. Council Member Rogers. Yes. Johnston. Yes. Valdemoros. Yes. Mono. Yes. Hugan. Yes. Fowler. Yes. And I'm a yes as well. That passes unanimously. We will move on to um, uh, Part G of our agenda, part G is the consent items. Um, it's the last item on our agenda. I will look for a motion. For approval of the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion from Council Member Rogers and a second from Council Member Valdemoros. Is there any discussion to this item? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and proceed to a roll call vote. Council Member Rogers. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Valdemoros. Yes. Mono. Yes. Dugan. Yes. Valor? Yes. And I mean, yes as well. That passes unanimously. Um, council members, that concludes our city council for our formal meeting for today. The council will uh, stand adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. directly to me. This will not necessarily affect the current structure of the divisions, but Nubia and Dustin will now be part of our weekly leadership meetings and briefings and have the opportunity to report directly to me on issues that they see of a need and concern. Also working with our division